So that's the work area done. We're now going to do the gantry and we're starting with the gantry side plates. Uh, we need uh, four each of uh, the following. We need some V-wheels, we need some screws, we need some washers and we need some uh, lock nuts. So I'm taking out the four I need and then very carefully uh, putting the packet back uh, with the other bits that I've not yet used. We've got to make sure that what we do to one we do symmetrically to the other. And in these instructions I've got to put in a screw there and a screw there. So there we go, there are those on, and then we've got to put these locking nuts. What you have to remember with these is that um, if you uh, do, do up one of these nuts and then undo it, and then do it up again and then undo it, uh, the action of that nylon as a locking mechanism uh, ceases to have the same amount of effect. And the next stage is to put the adjustable V-wheels in place. And this time we're using some eccentric spacers. Now, these were actually introduced during the lifetime of the old X-Carve. And it, they made a huge difference. They were a great uh, design improvement. There's a little circular shoulder here. Uh, and that goes in from underneath like so. So we've got that sitting like that. And we'll do that for each of those and they're going to go in opposite one of the ones we've already fitted. Then on goes a washer, very similar to the routine from before. On goes a V-wheel and then finally we have one of these nuts again. And notice that things are coming together again symmetrically. So we're now going to tighten those up just as we did before. Now this time you need to make sure that this eccentric piece which is at the back here uh, has its circular portion fitting into the hole. And the idea of these eccentric pieces is that you can put a spanner on there and as you turn them so it makes the wheel move to and fro so that the relative distance between uh, the, the two wheels can be altered so that you can make adjustments. That's the idea of them. Now according to the Inventables instructions the next step should be to put some uh, idler wheels in place. And I've actually had a go at doing this uh, and that's then followed by putting the stepper motors in. I think it's better to put the stepper motors in next and that's what I'm going to show. Now that connector should point away from this cutout here. So if I hold it up like so and when this is attached it goes like so. Now these are very simple. All you do is, it's a, a screw up from underneath, I think it's 16 millimeters long, and then a nut. Now before I tighten this up, notice on the stepper motor there is this uh, raised uh, portion here. And that's designed to fit in to this large hole. So as you're tightening these, make sure that that is lined up correctly. I'm happy with that. So that's the first stepper motor. Note the symmetry again and also I'll stress again that that uh, connector is on this side away from that cutout there. And now we're going to put the idler wheels on. Spacer, idler wheel. Now the idler wheels uh, can be fitted the wrong way around. If you look at them carefully there's a little bit of metal that's sticking out here that piece of metal which sticks out, there isn't one on the other side, that piece of metal goes down onto the spacer. So let me show you, screw through there, on goes the spacer and then that piece of metal goes against the spacer, on goes the nut. And we're then going to tighten these up. All right that's the completion of that process and this is what it should look like. We've now got to put a a drag chain bracket on uh, and onto the left hand one of these two. Now you can identify which is left and right quite simply. The motors go on the outside and the this cut out piece here, uh, the sloping piece comes towards you. So as I'm standing and as I'm looking at it the left hand one is this one and this is where we're going to put the drag chain bracket. 
and that's what that piece now looks like. Now we're now going to take this same left uh, assembly here and we're going to attach a limit switch. It's a micro switch uh, which has got a little roller. Uh, there are a pair of threaded holes here and one needs to use these little very fine screws. You also need a very tiny locking washer. Reasonably tight now be careful because these are fairly fine threads don't use the full leverage of a tool like this. I'm now going to pick up the pace uh, and I think I've taken you through uh, most of the sort of basic principles and the warning about getting the idler wheels around the wrong way and things like that. The inventable's instructions are excellent and I'm sure you have no problem following those. But I will show you uh, the bits and pieces at each uh, stage so you've got a clear picture of what you should be seeing at your end. And we're now going to start with the X carriage. And the first stage is to fit uh, some of these uh, idler wheels. If you look on this part of this extrusion, you'll see there are two big countersunk holes. And we're going to be putting these screws through there. So for both of them, I've put the screw in, on goes a spacer, and then I'm going to put an idler wheel on, and with the metal part up against the spacer, followed by the nut. We're next going to attach the fixed V wheels and they're going to go in the inside uh, but effectively they're the opposite sides of these holes here and these holes here. Now as these are not adjusters, these are fixed, we can tighten these up all the way. Next ones are the adjustable ones. Now these are all going to be very similar and the trick is take the screw feed on one of the adjusters and then it's going to go at the bottom here like so. Then on goes an ordinary washer, on goes a V-wheel and on goes a nylock nut. And as you do this again one needs to make sure that the circular part uh, of these adjusters goes into the hole uh, and doesn't just sit on top of it as you're tightening. So those are all done. So that's a total of eight V-wheels we put in. Next we're going to attach uh, one of the stepper motors uh, to this assembly and it goes on like so with the white connector here upwards. The holes here are tapped and so there's no nuts to go on the inside or anything like that. Next we're going to attach the drag chain bracket which is going to go here and again it's self-tapped holes. I've just made sure that that's flush there before I do the final tighten. We're now going to attach the uh, homing switch, the micro switch. Uh, now if you look where we are there's the, there's the top of the motor. We're down on the right hand side there's a pair of holes here. The lever arm of the switch is facing downwards, that's this way and in the instructions it says to use a small nut on the other side of here. Well I've discovered it's a threaded hole so technically I don't need to use a nut and I'm not going to. We now have to get ready for the z-axis uh, bits and pieces and first of all there's the z-axis motor plate and with that there is a bearing which has got a flange on it and there's a hole here uh, with a recess so that that ends up flush and we're going to secure that in position by using two of these screws uh, just to screw down onto the rim of that bearing. That's nice and tight. Next we're going to take this short piece of maker slide and we're going to flip this over so that those screws we've just screwed in on this plate are now underneath. And we're going to place it on top of the maker slide. Now uh, if you look carefully one end of the maker slide not the other, is already uh, got screw threads in the casting and you can see those quite clearly. Also note the bearing surfaces on either side here, the V surfaces here uh, for the V wheels, that's there and so this is going to go on like so. Uh, just nip the first one fractionally and then bring the other one in and that then helps to make sure it's really is in the right place and give it a jolly good tighten. The next task is to take the Acme lead screw and screw it on to the Delrin nut. 
So next we're going to feed the, uh, the screw up through the bearing here and it has a shoulder and it will stop. Uh, put a, the large washer on there and then this pulley and now we're going to tighten these grub screws and now we can put this nut on the top. Now there's a method shown in the instructions of how to stop this turning as you tighten this nut and it's to basically put this uh, hex key into one of those grub screws and use it as an anchor. The next thing to do is to attach the Z assembly uh, to the X carriage assembly and if you look on this side here there's there's our motor at the top there this side here there are two holes here and two holes there and so we're going to use a screw through there and one of these rectangular nuts. Once you started four of those off you can now slide this on and the trick is is to put your finger up from underneath to lift those and then they're going to be fed into the channel. That's it. And it doesn't say in the instructions how much this should uh, go below here but I, I don't think it's expected to be by very much. So I'm going to leave it just such that these uh, rectangular nuts don't stick out of the end. Now the engineer in me says that this piece should be square to this piece and so I'm just going to check to see how far out it is and at the moment it's a long way out so I'm just going to make that square because I suspect that will save a bit of effort later. And that now is nice and square and it's also nice and tight so that's done. We're now going to take the holder for the uh, DeWalt router uh, and we're going to put a pair of adjustable uh, V-wheels on. Uh, there's the inventable sign, this is the top and the adjustable wheels are going to go on this side. And now we want to put the ordinary fixed wheels on the other side. For the ones which aren't adjusted we're going to put a V-wheel on the uh, screw, then an ordinary spacer put it in the hole and then we're going to put a nut on. And at this stage we can put in the three locking screws which will hold the router in place but we're not going to tighten these up uh, yet and not until the router is inserted. The next task is to slide the motor mount onto the uh, Z carriage. Now you may need to adjust, remember that the two on this side uh, as you look at there, the two on this side are adjustable. You may need to adjust those so that you can get this running on the maker slide. Mine happens to be pretty close to being, being right. And I'm now going to uh, screw this onto the uh, Delrin nut which is already on that long thread. Now at this stage one will need to do a, a proper adjustment of these two um, uh, adjustment, adjusters here. Uh, and the way I've done it in the past is that um, I've felt the uh, one of the pulley wheels on one side or the other. If you're able to move them with your fingers then you could just uh, give it a little tweak more. And this top one is the opposite so I've got to loosen that off. And after a little bit of adjustment I've, I feel I'm happy with that. I can just turn those and, and it all seems pretty rigid. So that's good. And now we're going to put a homing switch on the side here and with its little lever sticking downwards and it's um, a, a tapped hole already. And now we have a, a safety stop screw which is going to be threaded up from underneath. It's a threaded hole. My advice is, is that you push the switch so it's fully home and make sure that the head of the screw is at least as low as the bottom of the roller. So I'm pretty sure I've got that about right so I'll just tighten that up a bit just to lock it. That seems good. Check it. Yeah I'm pretty pretty sure that's going to be alright. So that's the limit switch done.